Point. I'm in Kent somewhere, uh, just north of a place called Hythe on the coast. Um, I'm now traipsing through fields and stuff. Uh, this is never quite good. Hang on. Okay, yeah, so I had to um, start walking through a ploughed field. I'm never quite sure about these because it never seemed quite right to me. <laughs> When you do this, um, yeah. So, um, I was talking. In fact, there's a couple of you I was talking to, um, and the issue of money came up. Not from. From the point, well, I suppose it was from the point of making money, I guess. But uh, the first one was uh, when I was talking to Tommy Kelly and we were talking about Stuart Wilde. And one of Stuart's really successful books, which is, uh, I think, in the sort of uh, American top, you know, whatever book list for, for months on end, was um, The Trick to Money. Um, and the title was, the full title was The Trick to Money is, is Having Some. <clears throat> Which is a funny title, but obviously absolutely true. Because if you look at the people who, that um, have ended up with a lot of money, they didn't start off with nothing. This seems to be the thing that we often forget. Um, so, the other the other. Uh, person I was talking to was somebody I interviewed a little while ago called uh, uh, Trish Nichol and um, she was talking about bootstrapping and she came up with the term is well that's all very well but what happens if you ain't got any bootstraps and I think this is one of the things that we need to sort of ponder a little bit not just to do with money but to do with um, how we think about wealth and of course wealth if you go back to the old English term wealth and health are very very similar because they probably come from the same word I've got a feeling that they do actually uh, I think wealth is also uh, also means good good health in, in, in Anglo-Saxon don't quote me on this but I'm sure that's right. Um, so we have this sort of narrow view that um, wealth is to do with just money. And of course, if you haven't got your health, it doesn't matter how much money you've got, it's not going to make an awful lot of good. Uh, it might get you, you know. Might be able to pay for some treatment and all the rest of it. But there's no guarantee that um, that's going to work. But the point is, if, you, if you're thinking about money, you've got to start with some. Um, and there used to be a, a thing that my father used to say to me, that money makes money. And he's absolutely right. And I mean, money has to move. And in the process of doing that, it makes more and um, I was just sort of intrigued by the whole notion that we've got that we sort of money comes out of nowhere you know you often see this that you you're going to win the, the lottery or you're going to something's going to happen that you get a windfall and there's been some sort of distortion that adds to that within like the banking industry which 
where people would get these massive uh, bonuses at the end of the year and all that which of course has stopped now as far as I know certainly from the point of view of the amount of money they used to get so we're back to this idea of you know what do we do and I think the first thing and I've mentioned this before um, that you know you've got to look at what you've got what your what your assets are now I often get people when they come to me and they want to know what to do you know they want to get involved in music and they want to know what to do one of the first things I I get them to do is an, an old Jay Abraham thing of sit down and write out a list of everything you're good at not just to do with the skill that you're thinking about but everything you know good at playing football good at swimming you're good at talking to people have you you know you're good at telling jokes are you you know good at recovering from illness are you good at you know that type of thing just really big think big and then you write another list of all the things you're not good at so that might be you know you're short-tempered and irritable in the morning uh, it might be the complete rubbish at reading um, that maybe you're totally useless at uh, I don't know painting or you're no good at running all right so what we're trying to do here is we're sort of making an, in an inventory not of just what it is that you you can do because they're the obvious ones that we sort of think oh yeah you know we can do this we can you know I'm good at that but sometimes you can see something that's adjacent to what you do that you can add um, there's lots of people I know musicians who repair guitars there's one guy I know oh um, good songwriter singer songwriter but he's got a uh, very famous string company um, so let me just have a pause a minute just goes to show I just walked around the edge of this ploughed field I could have walked right through the middle of it but there was no indication that I could have done that but there we go so I'm just now finding my way uh, I can't flip this around okay yes. So, <clears throat> we've got the list of what we're good at, we've got the list of what we're not good at. Um, so, the list of what you're good at, you might, as I said, find something that runs adjacent to what you've already got. So, that's okay. What you're not good at gives you an insight into what may be a problem for other people because you won't be the only one who's got that problem and you might find for instance that you're not very good at staying at something for very long that's going to be quite a common issue now I think but that might be your thing that you think right okay well I can only do something for 10 minutes to 20 minutes right and then I get bored however I've got this thing that I do uh, so there we are you've got a way of helping other people with that problem and so on all right so in other words you're beginning to sort of map out the dynamics of how you operate and gives you an insight into how other people operate okay then the other 
The other thing that Jay Abraham used to do, and this is of course the, the days before Facebook and you know data data lists of, of people you know on your um, your iPad or whatever is the days of the Rolodex, right? Um, but it was a case of make a list of everyone you know. Everyone. Everybody you've known and everybody you know. Um, and the idea of that, and it's, you know, it's sort of obvious that that's going to be your networking. But you do it in such a way, of course, that, you know, you just don't sort of harangue people to buy something you haven't spoken to for you know, 10 years or something. But the idea is to start building relationships and networks with people, making contacts with people, because it's actually not necessarily them, but it's the people they know. So it's that type of thinking where you, you know, and of course, that is your wealth. That is part of your wealth. That's part of your assets. It's what you know, your life experience. You know, what you're good at, what you're not good at. Um, so this is the beginning of that. The other thing is, you may have a lot of things that um, you don't need anymore. So, you know, every now and again, some of us go through a period of time of casting things out, throwing things away. But of course, if you took those things and looked at them and thought, well, hang on a minute, if I was to give them to somebody, who wants, who would like this, whatever it is, book? I mean, books are a good one, aren't they, really? Because um, people don't sort of buy books anymore. But if you've got a book that you find interesting, you may have a group of people who are similar to you, so it normally works, who might find that interesting, you can just give it to them. A little note inside. I thought, you know, thought about you. Um, and, you know, start using stuff that you would have just thrown away. Because you've got to remember, if you take things to charity shops, they end up in the rubbish, right? The books... The books that are a minority thing, and most of the books that I possess are minority things, they just go and get shredded. Uh, most of the clothes that go to charity, they just end up being turned into energy. So, you know, think about stuff. It's not a case that you... It's like in, indirect use of money. All right. So, what else? Bootstrapping. Because I think this is a, an important point. Um, one of the things that people used to do, I don't know whether they do it so much now, because I think we've had our fingers burnt a little bit, is to borrow money. Now, there's nothing wrong with borrowing money, apart from the fact that you've got to pay it back. So you never borrow money to buy something that's a depreciating asset. So let me say that again. Never borrow money for something that's a depreciating asset. So, so if you buy something new that depreciates, don't borrow money for it. Unless, of course, it's going to give you some other way of getting money. So a car is a really good example of this. If you need a car to get you from A to B, you need a vehicle. It doesn't have to be flash. It doesn't have to be new. If you buy a new car, I think everybody knows the value of a car drops. If you lease a car, 
somebody's making a load of money out of you, right? So, you can borrow money for things that are going to make you money. Sometimes you can borrow money for things that just enable you to, to keep going, but you've got to be really careful with that. Because if things aren't working now, they're not going to necessarily work if you borrow money. So, bootstrapping. Most of what I've done, I've bootstrapped. Um, Blues Camp's a good e example of that. Never borrowed any money. Um, and we always run with a kitty in place. So if anything unfortunate happens, we're always well prepared. Same with the teaching. Never borrowed any money to buy equipment. Just used what I had. Cool. So, does that mean to say you can make a load of money and stuff? Yeah, it does. Can you do something that adds real benefit to somebody? Well, you, you've got to, to be able to make money. That is the secret. You've got to answer somebody's problem. Um, you know, and this is obviously the, prob the thing about art. Often it doesn't answer somebody's problem. But it might be the very thing that gives them the feeling of that they've arrived. And obviously this is where the big big artists make big money because they become their artworks are a sign of prestige but early on you know you're problem solving you're getting something on somebody's wall that makes their wall look really good so you know from that point of view if you're thinking about bootstrapping it's got to and it's involving money for, uh, you know assets you've got to rethink the assets and then you've got to think about where money becomes useful i haven't spoken about you know swapping skills with somebody who's got skills that you need that you haven't got all that comes into play maybe we'll have to talk about it some other time but so from a point of view of, you know how do you bootstrap without bootstraps you have to make something work as bootstraps. Pieces of string, maybe. See you soon.